So this is going to be two videos, a pair, about two fundamental limits of sine and cosine. They're both really important in their own right um, and are used uh, very much in like engineering and things like that. But they come up in calculus because if we want to carefully prove the derivative of a sine function as a cosine function, we need these limits. So that's often the first pe place people see them, although again, they have their own independent interest. So here's one. The limit as theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta equals one. So why would that be true? And first, what does it mean? And we're actually going to prove it by really sort of interpreting what it means in a little bit looser sense. What we're doing is when you take the ratio of two quantities, you're, a lot of the times what you're doing is you're just apparent comparing those quantities. It's not so much that you want to get the one number that's the fraction. You're actually looking at a ratio, and you're looking at how does the numerator compare to the denominator. Well, if the ratio was exactly one, we would be saying that sine theta equals theta. Well, the limit being equal to one really means that when theta is a really small number, this ratio will be very, very close to one. So we could just say that was is uh, that if theta is small, meaning close to zero, then sine theta is approximately equal to theta. Or sine theta, the ratio, over theta is approximately equal. Just really the same thing. Okay, and it's really in this form that I'm going to show it. Um, this is going to be complementary to what you'd see in a textbook, which is a bit more careful, but I want to use essentially the same picture, but a little bit more loose terminology to convince, hopefully give a plausibility argument that this is really going to be true. This in itself is how it's often used. The sine of a small angle is approximately equal to that angle. Now, it's really, really important that that only works if it's in radians. This is where radians absolutely becomes paramount. It's not incredibly well motivated before this exact point, but right now, to get this wonderful approximation where you can just look at a sign, and if the angle is small, it's going into it, that it, you can just erase the sign and say, oh, that's basically theta. A wonderful estimate, and it only works if it's in radians. If you don't believe me, try setting your calculator um, to degrees and take like one degree. That's definitely a small angle. And try taking sine of one degree. You will not get approximately the number one. That's for sure. Okay. Whereas if you set in radians and you do like 0.01 radians, we'll see that um, we actually get that the sine of 0.1 radians is very close to itself. Okay. So this is all comes, comes from the geometry of the circle. So we want to go over to GeoGebra here, the geometry of the circle. So let me, um, let me just move this down. Um, yeah, that, it wasn't really be playing nice with me in terms of labeling this. So um, this is going to be theta. And the reason I'm putting it out here is that when we have an angle, let me just go ahead and take it out a little bit. Um, theta is going to be the central angle AOP. But the real, one of the really big observations that we use is that if we're on the unit circle, then by definition, an angle, the measure of that angle theta and radians is exactly the arc length, the curving length from this point A to this point P um, on that unit circle. And so 0.266, that's exactly theta. Beta here, I'm going to move that out of the way for right now, that's going to be a different angle for uh, the second video that I'm going to do about cosine. Okay, so similarly, cosine, ignore that for a second, ignore this J, that'll be for the second video. What we're looking at is the sine, and we're going to compare it with the arc length. So another way to say it is if I look at this picture, I'm claiming that if this P is brought down, and I'll do that in a second, close to the zero position, this point A, that the sine, which we know is just the Y coordinate of this point on the unit circle, is going to be very, very close to this arc length. Okay, and so let's just look at that. And it's really, unless you need it to be really a little bit more carefully done, it's just looking at this picture, bringing this angle down, I don't need to drag this guy down with it, and observing that the height above the x-axis, that's the sine of this angle, is getting really, really close to coming down the circle, which is really, really close to vertical anyway, and ending up at a point that's really, really close to the foot of this altitude. As that comes in more and more, oh, I need to get my angle P, that the whole picture becomes more and more degenerate. You can barely even tell the difference between three things. One is P down to the foot going straight down. That's the sign. 
uh, there's also the straight line distance from P to C, and then there's the curving distance, uh, sorry, to, to A, and then there's the distance from P to A along the circle. Again, if you want to see a, really, a little more careful uh, demonstration that those guys are going to be really, really similar to each other, as that angle gets very, very small, you can look in any standard textbook. But look at what, what the numbers are telling us. They're getting very, very close to each other. Okay. And that's the, that's the level that I think we, we can be comfortable with. Okay. So this is just that, that vertical distance, which is exactly the geometry that gives us sine theta, is very, very close to the arc length along the circle. Because that part of the circle is getting very, very close to vertical. And that's theta. So these are very close to each other. Their ratio is very close to 1. And in other words, the limit, I claim, is going to exactly be 1. And that's really all I wanted to say about that particular one. The next video, we'll talk about something about cosine, which is used as the rest of the picture.